Joining us now, I'm pleased to say 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, I think we've learned from the price action that AI was not priced into these markets, but it's here. We're starting to price it in now. How do we adapt? How do we win if it's already here? Yeah, look, I think that markets do adapt to new information. So I think that that's okay. I think part of what you might see in the short run is markets over adapting, you could call it, call that hype, call that craze what it is before reality sets in. We've seen that time and again, but I have full confidence. I've began my career as an investor. I'm now a presidential candidate, but as far as I know, in my long experience in the markets, markets tend to work themselves out just fine. So I don't mind a little bit of that volatility in between. That's part of a market digesting a new input that it had previously taken into account, sure, the power sure. of AI in this case. But Vivek, speak to the bigger question. AI is in our lives, okay? Mm -hmm. There's many of us who say, oh, there's yep. great potential with AI. And some people say, my goodness, it's going to take my job. Maybe more of that. You're running for president. It's a big national issue. I know you're not a big fan of regulating it to the detriment of our own development versus, say, China. But what do we do about this? So, look, I think there are the kinds of AI that are problematic and then there are the kinds of AI that are not. I think AI used in tactical ways to trade stocks or to discover new medicines. That's not problematic. The problematic kinds of AI are those that actually interface with human beings. I think human beings have a problematic tendency to actually bend the knee, bend the knee to the authority of AI in ways that actually could be very problematic even as it relates to how we adopt certain policies. However, I don't favor adopting any constraints here in the United States unless China is willing and demonstrably able to abide by those same constraints. So I would bring a nuclear non-proliferation style framework of monitoring to say that the U.S. is willing to lead the way in adopting constraints to certain kinds of AI usage like we would have with respect to gain of function research. But we're only going to do it if China does the same thing. Um, Vivek, if I can ask you, you're already in Iowa, DeSantis, Trump, they're headed there next week. This is obviously a very important state. Um, when you are yep. talking to voters, when you are trying to get your message across to them, you know, the, the platform and is starting to get the stage is going to be crowded and, and all the different candidates have a lot of similar things to say. How do you distinguish yourself? What makes you the one thing that makes you different from everybody else that's entering the field? I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. And I'll tell you, if you ask people my age, what does it mean to be an American? You get a blank stare in response. And I think that all, things that voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, across this country are hungry for is reviving that national identity, that pride for the next generation of Americans. And I think I'm uniquely in a position to do that. A lot of conservatives are in the position of running from something. In my case, we're not just running from something. We are running to something our vision of what it actually means to be an American. And I think once we answer that question, our economic challenges and our foreign policy challenges become that much easier. But I think I'm the candidate who's taking the America first agenda to the next level because I'm doing it based on first principles and moral authority, not just vengeance and grievance. Vivek, I got to ask you about this. LinkedIn censored you for misinformation on mm -hmm. posts about climate change and the China threat. Yeah, I read those posts. I don't get it at all, frankly. Other presidential candidates are turning to Twitter to get their message out. Do you trust social media going into this next election? I do not. I think they have been demonstrably untrustworthy. We know that. But I'm also not a victim. I don't believe in victim culture. I called them out based on the hard facts, based on the hard facts. that First of all, every statement I, I, I made was an opinion grounded in hard facts. So the fact that they described that as misinformation, hate speech and violence was a farce. They then came out and described it as an error. That's a lie. They pushed back before they were embarrassed into having to unlock my account. So I don't trust them. But here's how I think we win. The facts and the arguments are on our side. The American people are now on notice that these companies are not to be trusted. And when I travel the country, I think people now have a healthy skepticism of what they're force fed through media and social media. And I think that skepticism is a good thing. That's mm -hmm. part of what makes us American. And in my case, I'm actually showing up and making the arguments rather than hiding from the debate. Vivek, you started off this conversation saying that you were a brilliant uh, business person. We don't uh, disagree with that at all. It was interesting, though, you made news a few days ago by saying that you'll accept some of your donations in Bitcoin. How was that going, given the volatility of Bitcoin, and what are you hoping to achieve? 
What I'm hoping to achieve is freedom for all people. Okay, so we accept donations in the normal form, but when I spoke at the Bitcoin conference, which I was invited to speak at, RFK Jr. spoke there as well, was to say that if people want to be able to donate in Bitcoin, they should be able to. We've worked and delivered a technological solution to make that happen. That's campaign message consistent for me because one of my goals is to put the U.S. Federal Reserve back in its place. I think the U.S. Fed needs to focus on stabilizing the dollar as a unit of measurement. And part of the signal I'm sending is that even speaking as a, as a potential leader of the United States, I'm not afraid or made insecure by other forms of currency like Bitcoin that are out there. To the contrary, competition breeds strength. That's what it means to be self-confident in our own dollar, is that we don't try to suppress other forms of currency. So that's the message that I'm sending. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you guys.